something different. But we need to live in fellowship with the Lord. If we're going to go deeper in the Lord and have victory, by the way, having victory is a deeper experience with the Lord. Do you know that? That's part of going deeper with the Lord, is walking in victory and walking in the blessings of God. God wants you to walk in the fullness of his blessings and the fullness of his victory. He does not want you to have a little. He wants you to have a lot. He wants you to experience the full glass of water, the full blessings of God. Why settle for anything less than God's best? And to experience God's deepest and highest experience in Jesus, you must and we must and you must be walking and living a life of close fellowship with the Lord. There's no other way you're going to experience all that God has for you if you don't walk in fellowship with Jesus, a daily fellowship with the Lord. And I shared last week that there's four imperatives. There's four imperatives to live a life of close fellowship with the Lord. By the way, we can because of what Jim prophesied today. Because of the cross and the resurrection, I can have close fellowship with the Lord Jesus. And he's made it possible for every child of God to have that close fellowship with himself. But there's four imperatives that we must follow. One, if I'm going to live a life of fellowship, close fellowship with the Lord, I have to spend time with the Lord every day. I shared that last week. That was my first point. There's no shortcut to this. We, you, everyone that's a Christian here, you must spend time every day with the Lord in the Word and in prayer if you are going to have that close fellowship. No ifs, ands, or buts. Not every other day, not three times a week. Every day you need to spend quality time in the Word, this is His presence, and in prayer. In that daily time, you will develop a closeness to the Lord and experience His presence more and more and experience His strength, His joy, His peace, whatever. That comes from the Word and it comes through prayer. But that quality time with the Lord. All of us, I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't know how, I care how long you've grown in the Lord. You need to spend that quality time in the Word and prayer with the Lord every day somewhere, some a set-apart place and a set-apart time. Every day. Number two imperative. If I'm going to live a life of fellowship, close fellowship with the Lord, we must communicate with the Lord throughout the day. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Now that doesn't mean I just pray, don't stop praying. <laughs> But that word pray without ceasing means at frequent intervals. Like if I had not just a straight line, but dashes. Frequent intervals. In other words, they used to call it this practice, the presence of the Lord. But what it means is that throughout the day, you have to communicate. If you're going to have a close fellowship with the Lord, you have to learn to be communicating with the Lord throughout the day. Now, sometimes you can't talk out loud and pray out loud, but in, the, in your spirit, you need to be talking to the Lord and listening to the Lord. This is a daily walk with the Lord. It's not, yes, you spend that quality time with the Lord, but then eh, throughout the day, you call on the Lord for different things. Um, you praise Him throughout the day. This is one of the reasons why the Lord wants to give the gift of tongues to every Christian. We talked about speaking in tongues in our Sunday school class. One of the reasons why he wants to give that to every child of God is because you can, commun you can speak in tongues anywhere, anytime. And, and it's just from your spirit. From your spirit, you can be praising him. Praising him throughout the day. In English, in the tongues, calling on him. If you've got nothing to ask, you praise him. Singing to the Lord calling on him, getting the Lord involved in everything in your daily life. Amen. Because you'll make choices throughout the day that can be lifetime changing choices. That can turn your life around, either for good or for bad. 
So that's why you need to get the Lord involved in everything you're doing at work, after work, during time at home, throughout the day. Get in the habit. It's a daily habit of communicating with the Lord throughout the day, talking to the Lord, listening to the Lord speak to you, as well as talking and calling on the Lord, listening to the Lord, getting into that habit. It's a frame of mind. It's a mentality. Talking and communicating and fellowshipping with the Lord throughout the day. He's in me and with me. He wants to get involved in my daily life. Will you let him be proactive in this? Throughout the day, call on him. Throughout the day, listen to him. Throughout the day, communicate to him, with him. And you'll be, develop that closeness to the Lord. Third imperative. Spend quality time with the Lord. To live a life of close fellowship, you need to be communicating with the Lord throughout the day. Number three, if you want to live a life of close fellowship where you're listening to the Lord and you're hearing the Lord's voice and you're experiencing his presence throughout the day, a third imperative is we must be daily or whenever we must do it. <laughs> to live a life of close fellowship, number three, we must immediately deal with sin. Amen? Amen. 1 John 1, 9. If we are confessing our sins, that's a present continuous tense in the Greek. If we are confessing, the word confess means to say the same thing. That's what the word confess means. You don't cover it up. You don't water it down. You don't rationalize it. But when you blow it, you confess it. Now let me be clear here. This does not deal with your salvation. There's a teaching today that says we don't need to confess our sins. In fact, they say you shouldn't confess your sins because all your sins are forgiven the moment you accept Christ, which I believe, the moment you accept Jesus, all your sins, past, present, and future, are all forgiven. And that's true. I'm glad of that. As far as my standing before God, he gives me his righteousness, removes all my sins that I've ever committed and will ever commit, and he gives me his Christ righteousness, and I stand before God, my standing always is, I stand in the righteousness of Jesus. We're not talking about that. We're talking about fellowship. We're talking about experiencing the Lord's fullness. Amen. We're talking about sanctification, as the Bible teaches it. And so if I want to be walking in fellowship, close fellowship, yes, I'm saved forever, and I'm going to heaven. But on earth, I want to have a close fellowship with the Lord. So if I'm going to have a close fellowship with the Lord, I need to be confessing my sin when I sin against the Lord. Whether I have a bad attitude, or whether I say something, or whether I do something, I can't just cover it up or ignore it. I need to just confess it. And by the way, the Lord loves you. If you don't confess it, he still loves you. But sin needs to be dealt with. You can't sweep it under the carpet. You need to deal with it. If you say something wrong, you blow your, you lose your cool, or you, you're thinking, you have a bad attitude, as soon as you become conscious of it, confess it. Now, I'm not saying that the moment you commit a sin, the fellowship is broken, because I was taught that too. I believe the moment you do conscious of what you have done wrong, and by the way, the Holy Spirit will make it will show you and will reveal, he will reveal it to you if you do sin. Not to condemn you, but because the Holy Spirit wants to draw you to have a close relationship with the Lord Jesus. So as soon as the Holy Spirit reveals it to you or you become conscious of it, deal with it. Repent of it immediately. Confess it 
But don't just say, okay, I, oh, I should have done it. The, the Lord doesn't act like that. He, he just wants you to deal with it, confess it. And by the way, you know what happens when you confess it? 1 John 1, 9 says, if we are confessing our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive, not a forgiveness, a standing. The word forgive means to send off. When I deal with a sin, cleansing happens on the inside. A setting free from that sin for future purposes. If I keep dealing with that, I'll be set free from the power of that sin. Amen? So the more I deal with it, I'm going to be cleansed from it and be set free from the power of it. I'm going to heaven. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about a liberal life of victory. I'll be set free from that sin and I'll be cleansed. There's a cleansing that happens when you confess. I'm talking about a sanctifying cleansing. A changing of your nature. God wants more than save you. He wants to change you. And this is talking about sanctification. Where he sets you free and changes you. And the more he changes you, the more you experience his presence. It's spoken of, of the, the, the great Baptist preacher, C.H. Spurgeon. That he was crossing the street. And I've shared this before. And he stopped in the middle of the street for about a minute. And then he walked, kept walking. And I said, why did you do that? He said, a cloud came between me and the Savior. And I had to deal with it. I said, wow, that's what I want to be. I want to be sensitive enough that when a cloud comes between me and Jesus, whether that's a wrong attitude or whether I did something wrong, I deal with it. Do you know sometimes sickness comes because, not in all cases, because we don't deal with sin. And, and, and you know you can pray for healing to your blue in the face <laughs> and not get healed. Because that sin brings consequence. And some sickness comes because of the chastening of the Lord. Some. I remember one time I was sick for a long time. Flu. I mean it kept on going. I said what's the deal here? Jesus healed me. And then he said... I will when you get your attitude right toward your mom. I had a bad attitude. And he showed me what the attitude was. I said, oh, Jesus, forgive me. I'm not, I, the Lord is my witness. Within a half hour, I was well. The Lord had to get my attention. Beloved, listen, the Lord wants a close fellowship with you. Now, I think I had a close fellowship with him. That's why I heard his voice, see? Amen? Amen. you got to be listening to his voice. When he, he speaks loud enough for the willing soul to hear. Amen. But you need to deal with sin. Don't cover up. Don't make excuses. Don't justify it. Don't say everybody's not perfect. That's all excuses and all that. When revival hits a church, there's a lot of repentance. I know I've been in the midst of it. Man, they repent of everything. You can't, if you're going to be a Christian that's close to the Lord and experiencing his presence, you have to be open and honest before the Lord. Any, you can confess, sometimes I've had Christians confess all sins except the one they know they've done way back. They don't want to deal with it because it may involve, it may involve restoration. So they don't want to deal with it. And yet it's hindering. When you confess, when you get in the habit of confessing, and by the way, when I say confess, I mean you've got to go in a, a, a closet somewhere. Okay, Lord, now is my time of confession. Sometimes a confession is, oh, Lord, help me in this. I blew it again. That's confessing. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me over this. I know I shouldn't have said, I know I get angry in traffic. I know I'm yelling at that guy every time somebody cuts me off. Some Christians, you never know they're Christians when they're driving, right? <laughs> Superintendent of Pacific Garden Mission, God bless me, he's with the Lord now. When he would park his car in front of the mission, I, I am not, not exaggerating. Boom, he hit the car in front of him. Backs up, boom, hits the car in back. 
gets out of the car and goes into the mission like nothing happened. <laughs> I drove with him once and that was the last time I ever drove. I have never seen a terror in the road as Brother Salner, but he loved the Lord and he was a prayer warrior, but it just, that was just something he, I don't know why. And some of you, when somebody cuts you off, <laughs> I'm not looking at you because I'm looking this way, brother. <laughs> but I'm looking this way. <laughs> but you may have some other thing that you've got to deal with. And by the way, the more you confess it, the more you get liberty from it and set free from it. Just acknowledge it. The Lord doesn't look at you any less he doesn't love you any less, but he wants you to deal with things. And by the way, that means also, if you have ought against your brother, or you wrong your brother, you need to go to that brother and deal with it too. Amen. Confessing. Communicate. That's part of communicating with the Lord, is it not? While I'm walking with the Lord throughout the day, Jesus, forgive me. Oh, Jesus, I need your help. Jesus, help me over here. See, it's communicating again with the Lord. Last imperative. This is very important. If I'm going to live a life of close fellowship with the Lord, I must be listening and responding to the Holy Spirit. Whew. This is big. If we live in the Spirit, and this word walk here is a different word than walk when he says it earlier in verse 16. There he says a general walking by the Spirit. Here is a really unique word in Greek. If we live in the Spirit, here's what it means literally. If we live in the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Interesting. The Holy Spirit is inside of every Christian believer. Even if you've never been baptized, filled with the Spirit, and experienced a Pentecost filling, or holiness filling, or boldness filling, whatever it is, the Holy Spirit is in every Christian believer at the moment of salvation. The Bible teaches that. Remember how I got saved, Pentecostal believers, well-meaning Pentecostal believers. Hey, brother, have you received the Holy Ghost since, you've been believed, since you believed? That just turned me off. Because I knew teaching, I knew I had the Holy Spirit. Every, say that with me. Every Christian believer has the Holy Spirit living in him. The moment of salvation, who's the Holy Spirit? He's the Spirit of Jesus. He is a person. He has a mind. He has emotions. And he has a will. And he comes to live inside of your spirit to help you get close to Jesus. And he's inside of you every day, every minute, even when you're sleeping, the Holy Spirit is living inside of you. That's why I believe in dreams. Before I go to bed, I said, Lord, give me some dreams. I believe in that. So during the day, while I'm walking, communicating with the Lord, the Holy Spirit is going to be communicating to me, with me. If he's a person, and he has emotions, and he has a will, and he has a mind, and he can speak, he's going to be communicating to me. He communicates by words, when I read the word. He communicates by feelings. He puts emotions inside of me. He communicates to me by impressions. He communicates... Um, uh, by putting a song sometimes. He communicates by an urge, a sense, but he communicates. There's different ways I communicate with you, right? I can communicate with words. I can communicate, put my hand around you. I can look at you and communicate certain things, right? The same thing with the Holy Spirit. He communicates to us in different ways. Whether you realize it or not, he's communicating with you every day. He may be assuring you. He may be encouraging you. He may be uh, correcting you. He may be instructing you. He may give you revelation about something. But he's communicating to you. And if you want to have a close fellowship with Jesus, 
You got to be learning to listen and respond to the Holy Spirit. The more you listen and recognize his voice, his communication, I should say. When I say voice, I'm talking about his whole communication. The more I recognize his communication, the closer I'm going to get to Jesus. It's beautiful. The Lord wants to communicate with you every day. It may not be something big. It may be something small, but he wants, to com he wants you to know he's in you. And he cares about you. And he wants you to have his fullness. He wants you to have the best. And so to have the best, I've got to listen to the Holy Spirit as he speaks to me. And, not, and respond to the Holy Spirit. He may tell you to call somebody up. He may tell you to, to witness. He may tell you to give somebody a booklet. I've had it where I've gone back to the car and the Holy Spirit says, go back there and give that such and such a person a booklet. And I try to ignore it. I can't get away. I've got to go back. Go back and say, I got to <laughs> Amen. That's listening to the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will just burst inside of me a song, and I'll sing a song, and then I feel that you've experienced the presence of the Lord. See, that's the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you. He wants you to be close. He wants you to experience all that Jesus has for you. Do not quench the Holy Spirit, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Grieving the Holy Spirit, Ephesians where it says, grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you've been sealed unto the day of redemption, is when I sin, when I go back, about, when I sin and I don't deal with it. I'm grieving. Now, how do I not grieve the Holy Spirit? Just deal with sin immediately. You won't be grieving the Holy Spirit. What's quenching the Holy Spirit? In the context, it's saying no to the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit is speaking to me and communicating to me, with me and he tells me to do something or not to do something or it leads me in some way and I, and I resist that, I'm quenching the Holy Spirit. So if I want to be close to Jesus, i got to be not grieving him and not quenching him. Keep the communication lines open. Amen. Don't you think the Lord knows all your flaws? Don't you think the Lord knows how to help you with all your weaknesses? Well, why not let him get involved in your life? That's what Jesus said in Revelation 3.20. I want to come in, sit down with you, and dine with you and help you. In other words, Jesus wants to help me. He loves me. He wants to be involved in my... He wants to walk with me. That's why he created me, to have fellowship with him. And when the Holy Spirit leads you to fill you, like this Sunday, he wants to fill you. And then the following Sunday, fill you with holiness. Or fill you with whatever, joy. Let him fill you. If the Holy Spirit wants to zap you, let him zap you. It's going to be a good zap. <laughs> Amen. Learn to respond. To listen. Develop a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. You can. Every, I, don't have a, I don't have a place on the Holy Spirit because I'm a pastor. I don't have a, a, a unique uh, line with, with the Holy Spirit because I'm a pastor. No. Every Christian can have a close fellowship with the Lord Jesus. There's no such thing as mediators that Christians have to go to to get it close to God. You can get as close to the Lord as I can get close to the Lord. The way is open for every Christian believer. Now I've been walking with the Lord and I've learned and I've learned through some things and I can share that with you. But I can't, I can't, I can't help, I can't be your close fellowship. The Lord, you and the Lord got to be, have to work that out. Amen. All I know is the Lord is calling you and he's drawing you so that close fellowship so that you can experience the deeper things of God. I shared with the Sunday school class this morning that of my journey, a little bit of my journey with speaking in tongues. From not believing it's for today to believing that it's a gift, but not for me, to believing it's a gift and it's for me. I believe that for my, my journey from way over here to where I'm at now was not possible if I didn't have a desire to be close to the Lord Jesus. 
I mean a real close, a real desire to keep close to Jesus. No matter what, what, what I have to do, even if I have to be a fool, I want to be a fool so I can be close to Jesus. Because that's where it's at, Christian. Everything flows out of fellowship. Ministry flows out of fellowship. Witnessing flows out of fellowship. Praise flows out of fellowship. Everything flows out of fellowship. Otherwise, it's mechanical. It's mechanical. I have, do I have to read my Bible? Do I have to go to church? Do I have to witness? Do I have to speak in tongues? No, it's not I have to. I get to. It's a get to. You, know how to, you want to know if you're, you're at that place? Uh, if you're at a have to, you're not fellowshipping with Jesus. If it's a get to, you're fellowshipping with Jesus. Where are you at? Are you fellowshipping with Jesus? Let's pray. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I get to pray. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you're here and you can't have fellowship because you're not even saved. Oh my goodness. I hope, I think, let's, let's start there. Does everyone here know for sure they're saved? If you're not sure, absolutely, boy or girl, teenager, if you're saved and you say, Pastor, I'm not sure, but I want to know that I'm saved. I'm not sure. Would you raise both hands and say, I want to know that I'm saved. Yes. Yes. I know, brother, that you've accepted Jesus. Lord, give him assurance. You're saved, brother. You just need assurance. Amen. Anybody else? Same thing. You need assurance. Give her assurance. By the way, I know that I'm saved not because I'm confessing my sins. I know that I'm saved because I received Jesus. My faith is in Christ. I'm saved by faith in Christ alone. I'm not saved by faith in Christ plus confession plus uh, water baptism plus speaking in tongues. No, no, no. I'm saved by faith in Christ plus nothing. Now, many don't have assurance because they think the enemy has maybe deceived them or that they, if they sin, they lose their salvation. No, you don't lose your salvation. You're saved forevermore. It's eternal life, not probationary life. And God will give you that assurance. There's reasons why we don't have assurance. If you don't have assurance, if, you, if you've accepted Jesus and you don't have assurance, come and talk to me and I'll share with you how you can have that blessed assurance. Hallelujah. How many Christians here say, Pastor, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit has spoken to me about having that close fellowship with the Lord. And, and I want that. I want that close fellowship with the Lord every day. Would you raise your hands? Hallelujah. Lord, I pray, grant that request to everyone there. I give them wisdom every day. Show them line upon line, precept upon precept. Every, every day, show them how they can have that close fellowship. But some of these imperatives, Lord, are crucial that we got to implement in our Christian life. Help us to do that. We need your help. The Holy Spirit even helps us to have close fellowship. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand on our feet. One way is to respond to the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is leading you to just come to the altar and, and just confess something or come to the altar and ask the Lord for help about something, respond to the Holy Spirit. Humble yourself and respond to the Holy Spirit. If you want to come and stand or kneel, you want to come and sit in the front pew, you just respond to the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus.
words are just powerful, aren't they? Face to face. The Lord wants to have fellowship with you. He, and maybe you are walking in fellowship with the Lord Jesus, but maybe he wants to, you to go deeper with him. Sometimes it's just one adjustment in our Christian life that we make. There's always adjustments in a Christian life. Sometimes it's just a little adjustment that can be made to help us get closer even to the Lord and listen and, and be conscious of his voice in our life. Lord, draw us this church closer to yourself in the last days. Draw everyone closer to you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you. You know, we sang that song about his presence. Jesus, his presence is heaven to me. I wonder if we can switch gears and just sing that in closing. If you have to go, you can go and leave. We have, I don't know if we have any extra roses, but, but let's, say, let's sing this in closing. His presence is what we need in our life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for watching the presentation from the New Life Christian Fellowship. We are located at 6235 West North Avenue, Oak Park, Illinois. For more information, call us at 708-848-2441. Thank you. May the Lord Jesus Christ truly bless you.